What is an assassin? Most of your descriptions of an assassin would probably entail high mobility, high damage, evasiveness, low durability, and the lone wolf type, right? Those would also be things that, at least from a surface level, apply to Zed. Yet, in spite of his identity closely resembling the typical attributes of his class of origin, as well as on occasion being synonymous with the class itself, Zed is an assassin who doesn't really come off as a traditional depiction of one. For years, he's been one of the most popular mid laners in the history of League, consistently finding double-digit presence across all ELOs basically ever since he came out. Alongside an impressive tenure is an equally impressive blacklist. He's one of the few mid laners who, no matter if he's strong or weak, will always find a ban rate double or triple his pick rate. In fact, I wonder how he has so many one tricks when it feels like half the time you can't even play him. But what makes him so different from the rest of his peers? To find out, the next entry in our permanently banned series will be the Master of Shadows himself, Zed. Okay, really quickly though, before we get started, this has to be the coolest thing I've ever been sponsored by because it's more of a shout out. You guys know Signal RGB, right? They're giving away a free high-end gaming PC that's shaped like the Nexus. I'm not even kidding. They built a computer in the shape of the freaking Nexus. Everything is packed within the crystal, so when you lift it, you can see a 3070 Ti GPU, an 11900K CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and a terabyte SSD, all of which are fully RGB customizable with the Signal RGB app that even has a game integration where it can change color whenever you cast abilities. All you have to do is join the giveaway using my link on screen, which I also have down in the description. That's it, that's all I wanted to say. I would enter this giveaway myself if I could. But anyways, let's go back to Zen. Calling back to what defines an assassin, their basic characteristics usually go along the lines of being fast and or difficult to track and dealing high amounts of damage, more often than not frontloaded. This makes them exceptionally deadly as they can dispatch a target before the target has a chance to see them coming or even react once they do. Compromising this is a classified susceptibility to anything that disrupts offensive tempo. Shields, disengage, and crowd control. Although you can argue that shields, disengage, and crowd control are universal responses to any class, not just assassins, and you'd be right about that. To find Zed's distinguishing traits, we have to delve deeper. When looking at the wiki's profile of them, the second sentence of the description should paint a clearer picture of their gameplay. Due to their mostly melee nature, assassins have to put themselves in dangerous positions in order to execute their targets. And continuing, they often have defensive tricks up their sleeve that, if used cleverly, allow them to effectively avoid incoming damage. Putting it simply, Risk. Risk is what separates an assassin from other classes. While they serve as an extreme threat to the enemy team, to exert their pressure, they have to put themselves in a situation where it's just as easy for them to explode as it is for them to explode their target. Most if not all of them have at least one defensive tool that can be used to shake off enemy pressure, but unlike the fighter subclass who achieves this via straightforward durability, an assassin's defense is limited to when they're already within striking range of their opponent. Picture Mordekaiser, known for building ample amounts of health and every once in a while armor and magic resist. In conjunction with this W shield, Mordekaiser is a very one-size-fits-all response to enemy pressure. So while he takes a beating just to reach his opponent, the aforementioned durability makes it so he still has more than enough gas in the tank to keep fighting once he eventually gets there. In contrast, the tools afforded to assassins offer little, if any, protection until then. Sure, once they're attacking, it feels like Twilight Shroud, Playful Trickster, and Hallucinate are even more consequential defensive tools and shields or durability, but they have to first get to you, during which any misstep or improper timing can result in them losing their life. Contrary to how it looks at times, assassins have to take on much more risk to exert pressure than other classes, under the expectation that they get more reward, and more quickly at that. It's here that we find the keystone factor exempting Zed from the challenges facing assassins, safety. In this case, the lack thereof. Zed's exposed to a lot less danger than his colleagues, while still having the ability to perform the duties imposed on him by his designation. Melee champs tend to have greater base stats, durability, sustain, or all of the above, out of consideration for the short range, naturally entailing a worse neutral game. In my previous episode on Draven, you may recall me bringing up the three game states, neutral, advantage, and disadvantage. Assassins have arguably the best advantage state out of any class in League. There's nothing more terrifying than a Master Yi, Kiana, Rengar, Yona, Fizz, or Katarina chasing after you with killing intent, especially if you're isolated from your team. Most assassins also tend to have surprisingly good disadvantages, using their mobility and or stealth to slip away from enemy pursuit. All of this, however, comes at the expense of their neutral game. Assassins prefer to avoid fighting neutral as much as possible due to the fact that they can't really do much in it. Sure, you can toss out a small attack every so often like a Rengar Bola, Echo Timewinder, Talon Rank, or Nefiri Dagger, but comparatively, they're less intimidating than getting shot at by Zareth or Chase. Zed is one of, if not the only assassins who actually has a neutral game. In many cases, his neutral is actually his strong suit, especially in the mid to late game. He may not be known for the same kind of rush down 100-0 insta-kill that someone like Rengar is capable of doing, but he's a lot less do or die. At times, it's as if he's more of an AD mage than assassin, but that's the thing with him. Assassins are fast and deadly, but that in and of itself can make them predictable as you can adjust your gameplay to that pace. Like, if you see a Yonai priming his third Q, you can prepare yourself for an engage and get ready to fight. 
If Rengar walks into a rush, you can stay outside of attack range, or even intentionally walk into range to get ready for an attack. Provided you're a full HP or are playing a non-squishy champion, simply being ready for an assassin to attack you mitigates a significant portion of their pressure, the element of surprise. Again said, however, even if you see him and even if you're ready for a fight, he doesn't have to go for a full-on attack to pressure you. Thanks to Living Shadow, he can project himself a distance forward, with the Shadow emulating the same cast of his Q and E, making it so you basically have to treat his Shadow as if it's actually him, because it can be. Razor Shirt again has a range of 925, not the most impressive distance for a projectile, but with Living Shadow, he can extend the effective range by 650, increasing it to 1575 or higher since the Shadow stays in place while he can move, exceeding a fully charged Zara Q, which is only 1450, not to mention being harder to see coming on account of Living Shadow having no cast time and being very fast. With both Razor Shirt again and Shadow Slash being AoE abilities, the former being a penetrating skill shot and the latter being a radius attack, Zed has excellent coverage, giving him both strong wave clear and teamfight pressure. With his W giving him the freedom to cast these skills remotely, he can attack opponents while bypassing the need to put himself in harm's way. And with more ability haste and ideally a blue buff, that neutral game only gets stronger and stronger. As assassins build more items, the only thing that gets stronger is their advantage, they just kill you faster. That's kind of the only difference between a Rengar with 3 items and a Rengar with 6. The full build Rengar has enough damage to kill you twice over. On the other hand, what improves between a 3 item set and a 6 item one is not his ability to one shot you, rather his neutral pressure. Unlike other assassins, he can slow the game down to a pace he's comfortable with and then speed it up whenever convenient. He forces you to play his game and there's really nothing you can do about it. Like I said earlier, assassins, most of them anyway, generally play at one pace for the simple fact that they can't play at any other. A talent cannot play slow, Katarina cannot play slow. If they do, that just makes it easier for their opponent to chip away at them. But Zed can, and often does want to play slow. If he doesn't want to play confrontationally, he can simply wave clear and poke from a distance, spamming Q and E while extending his range with W, or holding onto his W to dip out just as soon as you engage on him while proceeding to then use the shadow he just left behind to strike back. If he so chooses, he can spend the first 20 minutes perma-shoving and AFK farming to get items and more points into his skills. In fact, he can play safe for the entire rest of the game if he wants. Season 13 was the longest stretch of time that Zen had a 25% ban rate or higher because of this. With Ability Haste running rampant and AD champs having the best itemization they've had in a while, Zed was one of the biggest abusers of this. With Black Cleaver, Ravenous Hydra, Cerildo's Grudge, Lucidity Boots, Spear Shoujin, and Dustblade, this mother had like 150 ability haste, 3k HP, AoE damage and sustain from Hydra, Tank Shred from Black Cleaver which became super easy to apply thanks to Hydra's AoE, in addition to Cerildus having armor pen and an AoE slow making it easy to land your Qs. With all that cooldown reduction plus Shoujin adding even more, it was like playing Earth Zed in normal Summoner's Rift. With blue buff and presence of mind, he could literally just E and Q spam on you over and over and over again like he was a mage. To make matters worse, with the cooldown refund and Shadow Slash and him already having triple digit ability haste, Living Shadow's cooldown was on average only 3-4 to four seconds, giving him basically infinite shadow of time. I'm not exaggerating when I said this guy's range DPS and wave clear was even better than actual mages even though technically he's an assassin. Like I said before, some assassins have an ability that can be used for poke damage. Kiana can throw a Q at you, Nocturne can throw a Q, Cast Sitting Q, Kha'Zix W, and so on. But those abilities on their own are not threatening enough to be scary. That's intentional though, assassins are all in champions, not neutral. If you take a Shadow Slash and two Shurikens however, you essentially took an all-in's worth of damage. Only Zed doesn't have to expose himself to your all-in to do so. The central interaction with assassins is that they always make the first move. What you do in response to that is what determines if you win or lose. If assassins walk up to CS minions, that's their first move, which you can respond to by attacking them while they do it, CSing minions yourself, or whatever. If an echo face dives onto you, that's the first move. What you do after determines if you win or lose against him. In fairness, proactivity is often encouraged in leap. Rather than wait for something to happen, it's better to take steps to make something happen. But reactivity is also good since it gives you the chance to assess the situation and find a way to either salvage it or punish the opponent in a different manner. For example, if the jungler ganks bot, you can react to that by stealing their entire topside camp or taking void grubs or herald. Again, this is why assassins are high risk, high reward. They can't play reactive. I mean, I guess they can play reactive by waiting for the enemy team to engage their team so they can go for a flank, but you get what I mean. Assassins prefer to strike first if they can, but making the first move naturally comes with the risk of being punished if the opponent is given the chance to act. The whole idea is for the first strike to be so impactful that opponents don't have a response. Because, you know, they're dead. Zed, however, can create situations that force the enemy to make the first move and then respond to that accordingly. At the press of a button, he can go from safely away to literally right on top of you. Most players know this and will always treat Living Shadow as if it's the actual guy himself, since it has the potential to be. This creates a dynamic where the onus to act is on the opponent to attack or retreat, both of which a good Zed is prepared for. He can stack the deck against his opponent to where no matter what they do, they will come out of this interaction at a loss. 
but even if they don't do anything, that still results in a loss as Zed can just spam Q and E from afar. Let's use a few hypotheticals. In neutral, Zed tosses out Living Shadow and starts checking out E and Q at the enemy laner. This is still neutral game, so neither opponent has made an actual first move, but Zed's opponent is now under fire, putting them in a disadvantageous position. If they decide to do nothing, Zed gets free lane priority for the duration of his shadow, letting him wave clear, harass, whatever he wants. If the enemy backs away out of a fear of a possible all-in, the same outcome happens, Zed gets free wave clear and poke damage. If the opponent is also ranged, they can try to strike back from afar, but being an assassin, Zed doesn't really care about how much HP he has, he only cares about how much you have. A Zareth and Zed exchanging mutual blows is a win for Zed given that Zed can finish off the rest of Zareth's HP much faster. Melee champions are in a much tougher situation. If they want to strike back, they often have to commit to a hard engage, but the moment they charge at him, he can just blink back to his shadow and reset back to neutral, exploiting the slow from landing E so the shadow to prevent you from chasing after him. With this ability to produce two shadows and blink to each one no matter how far away he is from them, unless your name is Camille or crowd control and burst him during that time, Zed almost always has a way out, reinforcing the whole notion of safety. No matter what decision you make, you will lose the interaction. A good Zed player can repeatedly create situations that result in either a net neutral or net negative for his opponent. He is one of the most difficult champions in the game to play against because he gets to decide the type of interaction. He can certainly endeavor to be a straightforward assassin, running towards the squishy, shadowing closer to them, then death marking for a full combo. Or he can sit back and spam abilities at a safe distance, using the very same mobility tools that he uses to engage to also get away from possible attackers. It's the freedom to switch between offense and defense and vice versa at his discretion whenever he wants to that makes him so frustrating to play against. Few assassins, actually few champions in the game have abilities that simultaneously cover multiple and more importantly, mutually exclusive bases. His Living Shadow is a neutral pressure tool, an escape tool if it needs to be, and an avenue of entry for an all-in if it needs to be. It's all three of those at the same time. Razor Shirt again can be a wave clear tool and a poke tool. Shadow Slash can also be a wave clear tool, a poke tool, and also a peel tool with a slow component. Death Mark can be used as an all-in tool or a peel tool either to dodge a key enemy attack or to create a shadow so he can ring around the Rosie his opponent. When looking at the Assassin roster, I can't think of any other champion with the same range of versatility as Zed. They usually put more eggs into one basket. Zed is banned so often because he's one of the safest champions in the game despite being part of a class notorious for being unsafe. Not just that, but he's adaptable. A common defense argued by Zed mains is that in exchange for his safety, his kill pressure is not nearly as quick and devastating, to which I actually agree. Zed and Talon are often compared to each other since prior to Kiana, Nafiri, and Yona, they were the only two AD assassins in lane. Talon was always touted for being the more guaranteed choice for actual assassination, while Zed was prized for his slipperiness and neutral pressure. In terms of literal one-shotting, Zed's definitely not as good as his peers, but people would much rather deal with a different assassin than Zed, since at least for them, fighting in Afiri, Kha'Zix, and Rengar is more straightforward. This seemingly endless amount of options he has for attacking, retreating, escaping, and outplaying is what makes him extremely fun to play. He has some of the highest agency out of League's entire roster, but for his opponent, sometimes you just sit there wondering what the hell you can even do. The frustration of seeing Zed throw out 5 shadows in 10 seconds, taking triple Qs to the face and losing all your HP even though you thought you were in advantage and he was in disadvantage, the feeling of helplessness knowing there's no point trying to engage him since he can just blink away, all while he gets to bully you constantly with ranged poke. Zed is permabanned because he's one of the most gaslighting champions in the game. A good Zed player will make you feel like nothing you do works while everything he does works. Thematically, it's a very well executed design, with the whole theme about ninjas being about evasion, deception, disorientation and stuff, and the shadow motif making you second guess what's real and what isn't, Zed's a well designed champion in concept. It's just in practice, the man can do far too much while making you believe there's no counterplay. That concludes my episode of Permanently Banned Zed. Fun champion to watch and to play, but my god, dealing with a good Zed player is hell on earth. The only way to stop a Zed is for your entire team to consist of point and click or instant CC like Pantheon, Alistar, Gragas, Fiddlesticks and such because sometimes it takes a full army to shut that guy down. Leave your thoughts on Zed in the comments down below if you think there are other reasons he gets banned that I haven't mentioned. But for now, if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you could leave a like and subscribe. Consider following me on Twitter at Varsverm, joining my Discord server, and checking out my permanently banned episode on Draven if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.